I'm really glad to be here. I want to uh, thank everyone for what they're doing. All the firefighters with the Forest Service, uh, from the other federal and state agencies, from the cities, uh, volunteers. I understand that we've activated the uh, military and that they're being trained. Um, all the local governments and states that we're working with, the contractors and volunteers. Also, I want to thank our congressional and state leaders that are here, Governor Brown, Senator Wyden, Congressman Walden, Congressman DeFazio, and the Public Lands Commissioner from Washington, Hillary Grimes. Um, I wanted to come out here as soon as I can and uh, learn and ask questions firsthand to get an assessment of the fire situation out here. This has been a very long, tough year. This is one that began in the southeast last fall. We had about 7,000 firefighters there in the Appalachian Mountains, and it continues to go on. There's not a weather-ending event uh, in sight. We're nearing um, a lot of records. As some of you know, a record-breaking year. We've been at planning level five, which is the highest uh, planning level five for 31 straight days. I think the 10-year average is around 17. Uh, we've had almost 8 million acres burned. Um, the average is about 5.7. National Forest System lands, uh, we're at almost 2 million acres with a 10-year average of a little over a million. We have about 80 large fires going on right now. Uh, that's fires greater than 100 acres across the country. Normally for this time of year, it's about uh, 20. Um, so the season has been longer and uh, it's still has got a ways to go yet. The other thing that's going on, I think I'm right that the first time in history that we've been at planning level five for a fire situation, we're about to have a major hurricane, a category four or five uh, strike the mainland uh, U.S. Um, on the good news side of things, um, normally uh, we burn about 3,000 structures by this time of year. And I think we're at about half of that right now. So uh, that's very, very good. Uh, we're also above average in a lot of these fires that started in difficult places on the map, places that uh, we would have preferred that they not start, but we're definitely above average in that. We're tapped out on resources. We've got 28,000 people uh, fighting fires across the country. We're supporting the uh, Hurricane Harvey recovery efforts there in Texas, although we're turning some uh, resources loose there. Then we got people preparing there for Irma in Florida. One of the big concerns I have is firefighter fatigue. You know, when we've been going, our folks have been going at this, not just Forest Service, but other federal agencies and states, the counties, and everybody since this last fall. That's definitely something on our minds. Uh, something I'm going to be talking to each of the regional foresters about, about how we uh, address this. Um, we've spent all of our money. This is the ninth time since 2002 that the Forest Service has exhausted all of our fire suppression funds. Uh, we began fire transfer from other accounts uh, that we have. This impacts our other own ongoing work that we have. We have transfers and funds underway now. We're very grateful for the additional funding that we got from the Congress uh, this year. That was 1.6 billion. We got extra uh, suppression funding, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, our cost of fire suppression this year could exceed two two billion dollars. So one thing that I want to stress is we desperately need a fire funding fix. Um, large emergency fires that are natural disasters and, and they need to be funded like natural disasters. And I want to work with um, members of Congress, work with Secretary Purdue and others to get a uh, fire funding fix. And we need one that stops the growth of the amount of funding budgeted for fire suppression and also um, um, funds those um, natural disaster fires, those emergency fires um, out of emergency funds um, and not out of, out of our normal appropriations. So if we can get those two things done and a fire funding fix, uh, that'll stop the need for fire transfer like what we're, we're having underway now.
Also, whenever these fires are over, we're not leaving. The job's not done. There's a lot of recovery work that has to be done. I know the regional employees are here in Region 6. They're already planning on that. Uh, there's a lot of different aspects to that recovery work. One component would be uh, salvage of, of timber, and that's going to help with jobs and the economy in, in local communities. Looking to the future, I want to work really hard uh, with other Foreign Service leaders and with all our many partners that we have, other federal agencies and states, we have a lot of non-governmental organizations to increase the amount of forest management work that we're doing on the ground. And we want to anchor that in good science, base it on good data, and work collaboratively with groups. We have a lot of successes um, going on. Uh, for example, I was talking to the state forester here in Oregon this morning, the Good Neighbor Authority, and then I just talked to the folks up in Washington. We have an agreement there. And we can get a lot of great work done, not just on national forest system lands, but on cross-boundary uh, cross projects. So we're going to be looking for opportunities to increase capacity in our resources on the ground to do more good forest management work that reduces the threats uh, from insect disease and catastrophic fires um, like this. So again, I'm very glad to be out here. I, I appreciate everything that's being done, all the cooperative work, and look forward to answering uh, any questions.